All right, how's it going, everyone? Hey there. Hi. Woo. Hey there. Welcome to the Puppet Parent Podcast. Woo! Episode nine. Hi, everybody. Do you yeah. want to do the YouTube one on your phone so that we can oh, see yes. those comments on YouTube? Yes, Perfect. and actually, we should be getting. Um, hey guys. Hi. Uh, I'm Chad. This is Z. Hi. We're married. married. We had babies. Oh, boy. That makes us parents. Uh, we're also puppeteers. Um, we're going to do a podcast. This is episode number nine. It's uh, Sunday. We're broadcasting live on Facebook and on YouTube. So uh, facebook.com slash wondersparkpuppets. Uh, YouTube, just search for Wonderspark Puppets on there. It, it'll get you there. Uh, you can check us out on uh, puppetparentpodcast.com. Uh, and we're listed on Spotify, Overcast, Apple Podcast, CastBox, etc., etc., etc. You can find all that information on our websites. Uh yeah. And if you, hi, uh, hi there, Karen. If you <laughs> Karen comment, took one of my PDs, one of my professional yay. development workshops. Hi, Karen. If you so co- nice to see you. Yeah, we're doing this every Sunday at nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Please join us. And we would love to hear what you uh, have to say. I'm going to turn down my volume so you don't hear little bumps, but we will be um, oh, cause each watching time, the, the chat box. Yeah, people chat. It goes click, click. Oh, yeah. Um, or can we see the chats in YouTube too? It should be. It should also pop up right there. Oh, but I'll tell see. you, okay. we do not have much of an audience on YouTube. So. Well, you never know. Somebody <laughs> might be like, "Hey, why aren't you responding?" Or uh, something. Let me tell you, the the one consistent comment that we've gotten on YouTube mm-hmm. for like posting our our weekly uh, DIY workshops and uh, our like our Friday at eleven o'clock puppet shows, there's always some spam bot that always gives a website, a certain website, and always have to go in manually and be like, nope, goodbye. Oh, so weird. Every time. I've never seen that happen. Nope, and no one will either. <laughs> but I've moderated the comments for our last live show and it never on, happened. On YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, it's always like after the fact. Oh, after the fact. Yeah, it's always okay. like after it's done. Yeah, so so hello, hello to everybody, and hello to Karen. Yeah, it's her first one. Wow. First podcast of ours. Well, we've been doing this for, this is our ninth, ninth yeah. episode, so <laughs> we're pros now. I'll drink some hydro <laughs> to that. Ba-bing. I got tea. Yeah. It's Sunday. You guys, we did it. We made it through another week mm-hmm. and a weekend, and here we go. Yeah, here we go. Should we center some more? Yeah, Is that's that what right. you're trying yes. to do? Yes, so we're, we're okay. if you're watching this... <laughs> You're doing this live. So, this week, it was a crazy week. Uh, not so much a crazy week for Wonder Spark. <laughs> what do you but, mean? Uh, it, well, instead of like um, doing a lot of shows for people, uh, mm-hmm. I was busy building a slam piece. Mm-hmm. So, I took um, took all my anger and all my frustration, and I was like, bam, I made something, birthed it out. Uh, and it was part of the uh, uh, Puppet Show Place Theater's uh, yeah, that's right. Th- this I'm is the, the shirt. Puppet Showplace Theater Represent. bat signal <laughs> uh, uh, that Z's wearing on her t-shirt. Um, yeah, and it was part of an evening of like what fifteen different acts. It was a like bunch that. of different short pieces. Mm-hmm. I don't remember how many, but um, but we love the Puppet Showplace Theater. Wow. They're out of Boston. They mm-hmm. are one of the country's oldest, longest running puppet theaters and it's a theater specifically dedicated to puppetry and they bring in touring puppet companies from all over the country and all over the world and they also uh, have works for adults they do workshops they have an artist in residence all sorts of amazing things happen there and and tiny factoid it was actually the very first place that i ever performed live professionally where i got paid so, um, as a yeah. puppeteer, and, and um, it has a very special place in my heart, Puppet Show Place. And so, because Chad performed in the Slam uh, this past weekend, or Friday night it was, right? Was it Friday night? No, no Saturday. No, Saturday night. So, last night. Yeah, li- literally. <laughs> oh, my God. Less, uh, I can't 24 even. hours ago. <laughs> it feels like a year ago. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, Chad performed in that Slam last night, and um, I wanted to wear my t-shirt from Puppet Show Place Mm -hmm. because I love Puppet Show Place so much. And Roxy and the team from the show place, if you're watching this, we love you. We love you guys so much. Yeah. And and what's really cool about a slam is that um, a lot of your friends also perform in the slam. And it was like, um, because it was like 15 pieces, it was way more than you would would ever see at like a normal puppet slam. 
or like an evening of adult short puppet you know shows you get like six to eight maybe sometimes 10 never 15 you know and never like just one after the other after the other in mm-hmm. like a regular puppet slam like when you're out and about in an actual theater maybe we'll see that in a couple of years mm-hmm. uh, unless you're in asia right now then you're just like business as usual we'll just hose you down before you go in take your temperature um you know usually there's like okay you have to bring all your stuff onto stage quickly and a couple other people who are like waiting to do their acts also drag your crap on and you're setting up while the host is in front of the curtain vamping in front of a spotlight or there's a musician playing or something like this yes and then and then it's and then it's your turn and you go and then everybody claps wait great there's an amazing short piece I'm, i'm so glad we're all drinking right now that makes it so much easier and then uh and then you have to take your stuff off of stage and you somebody has to clean up like all the all the stuff that that is strewn everywhere, you have to get it off. And somebody gets their stuff on, and so there's always like five ish minutes in between acts, you know, depending on what kind of an evening it is. But this was just like boom, 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 like one after another. And Roxy did an amazing job emceeing, so that was mm-hmm. really great. And you know, Chad, can you want to talk a little bit about the piece that you put together for that? Yeah. I could almost show, you know what, I, I, I don't have it queued. I don't have it queued up, but but I will, if you're watching at home. Now, this is a piece for adults. <laughs> we should clarify. Wonder Spark Puppets creates works for kids. Yeah, hold but, on. Uh, Chad and I, while well, he is blocking my face. Hi, everybody. Yeah, um, <laughs> sorry. Chad and I um, are our own people, and we make work for adults uh, sometimes, and because we're artists. And um, so Chad made... Um, a piece uh, for the slam. I would have liked to have made one too, but I'm just so busy right now with uh, you know, parents' solidarity. Is, is so I'm just gonna time. I'm gonna play this on mute while 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 we while we chat. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. That that's fine. So um, this. Yeah. So uh, I, w- I was very angry when I when I decided to make this piece, uh, and and I would suggest you watch it with the sound on. Uh, well, we are not playing with the sound, but it was like. I wanted it to be like an animated political cartoon, like like a political cartoon you see in like the the Sunday Times or something, but uh, where everything's labeled because in political cartoons everything has a label and everything's like the metaphor is clearly spelled out mm-hmm. for e- ease of public consumption, and so this is my big like middle finger to the people responsible for all the terrible things happening in our country at the moment. And I think it's pretty obvious who I'm pointing that finger at. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to do a toy theater style, but eventually I was just like, you know what? That's just too much work. I don't have a photocopier. We already uh, have a stage. Yeah, and, and I, I'm already good <laughs> at hand puppets, so I'm just going to do that. I know how to make them quick out of like hot glue and felt and Z with the assists uh, stitching together the, the bodies. Yeah, but um, so that I'm just going to... Wait, you guys should just watch it online. Just, just, where just would watch they it on find Facebook. It? So if you go to Facebook, uh, just go on our on our website on Facebook. So facebook.com slash Wonderspark Puppets. And uh, and we, we posted it there so you'll be able to find it. You know, if you search through our through our stuff. Wait, it's posted on Wonderspark Puppets page? Oh wait, you know what no, it's not. It's not it's totally not. No, so where would they find it if they wanted to well, watch man, it? Well you know what? I just posted it on like my personal Facebook page. Is it public? Yeah. Okay. So if you look up Chad Williams <laughs> uh, with a top hat, a red top hat. That's right. Fiery flames coming out of the top hat. Yeah, you know, that's right. We didn't post it on our Facebook page because we didn't want to sully the brand. Well, we, because <laughs> well Wonder Spark is for kids yeah and this is definitely a political piece so right. um and maybe it looks li- like it could be cartoony and silly mm-hmm. uh and for kids but it's not yeah. it's not intended for that do you hear that alarm um, i do yeah i'm gonna go take care okay, of that okay cool that is um <laughs> parent duties guys yeah our kid has an alarm clock now because uh he, he well he's had one for a while but all of a sudden he became very uh interested in how it works and now the alarm goes off at all sorts of hours isn't that awesome? <laughs> For those of you who don't know, we have a um, five-year-old and a seven-year-old, and whoo, it's crazy right now. How are how's everybody uh, faring? 
you know, well, while Chad's gone, I'll just talk. Um, I'm coming back how, in. Oh, he's coming fair, back fair in. Um, Chad's awesome. He's been doing a great job at dadding. Oh, no. and oh what have you been <laughs> saying that you have to compensate with? Oh, he's great. <laughs> oh, no problems there. Definitely not a fixer-upper like that Frozen song. What? No. <laughs> I, I was just saying Guilt's that... Guilt's face. I was, guilty. I was just saying that Leaf now has an alarm clock and yes. that he has been enjoying exploring that, but it means that the alarm goes off at all sorts of hours. All the yes. hours. Eh. Move eh. my arm? Okay. Yeah. I guess I won't do that. I don't, you know what? I don't like... Uh, I don't like when, when I was five, so I lived out in the country... Uh, I felt something stinging in like the back of my neck, the very back, and I sp splat it, and it was like, oh, it's something, and it was like slimy and mushy, and I brought my hand in front of my face, and it was covered in blood, Ew. my blood, or something, you know, it's like a big mosquito or something, and it freaked me out, and I screamed and ran into the house, you know, and ever since then, like, I don't want anything touching this area of my body. It was like the primal fear, like... You know, everybody has a has a memory. The first time they ever saw their own blood, right? Like, I I think it, it sticks with you somewhere. I mean, I definitely remember like the first couple times I was like, mm. like, like cut my finger open and I was like, I'm not gonna live forever. Oh, you this know, sucks. I don't know that I remember my very first cut or something like that, but mm. I do remember like the first thing that left a scar. Oh, okay. Mm. <laughs> Was it was it like cool? Was it like macho? Was it like it was a bear? We were staying with my parents in a hotel, either on the way to or from Florida, because yeah. my aunt Betty lived in Florida, mm -hmm. and somehow I tripped in the bathroom, and there must have been like a little sharp piece of linoleum sticking up, and it went right into my knee, and I still have that scar. Oh. Isn't that exciting? That that is that that is definitely not the uh, kind of like manly macho blood drawing you know scar scenario no no i think i was three and i cried a lot oh. and uh yeah and we were on vacation so i don't think and it was the 80s so i, I don't know that we had much in, by way of re repairing you know like bandages so, of, and of stuff of course of course you got a scar yeah. yeah because you just you just couldn't fix it in a way that what what was the 80s what were they gonna do so you spit on it and... so you just suck it up yeah Suck it up, three-year-old. You know, yeah. Let's go watch some Falcon Crest in the bed with some ginger ale. Let's watch some Murder, She Wrote. Club soda. <laughs> I hope my mom's watching. You know, you know what's awesome? Rewatching. <laughs> mom, if you're watching, mm. you can collab cora cora corroborate. Corroborate. <laughs> <laughs> you can verify this story. And say, yes, that happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we want to hear from you. So it, it, do you guys have like a like a primal story like that like your first scar what a weird thing or your first blood or something to say hey, check it out there's your mom i remember that see happened yeah truth we're, we're just spilling truths here well that's nice they were just it like all oh, these truths oh oh <laughs> there they are everywhere. It's like the truth infomercial you can't <laughs> hold all these truths oh oh oh, oh. oh. Mm. well now we need something to solve that problem <laughs> I think this is it. This podcast oh, is the truth. This is that we're answering a need. Well, we're it's like the truth um, holder honor, right? Because we're speaking our truth, mm -hmm. and then it, the internet's forever, apparently. Uh, That's what they say. Yeah, until until, until who knows? It's not. Yeah, until it's not. Uh, you know, it's not forever. The Donnie Darko movie website. There is an archive of it, but I just want to say that I found out a few days ago that if you go to DonnieDarko.com. Not there. Oh my god! I wonder what happens if you is, is the is the Space Jam website still on? I don't know. I'm going. I'm going oh. right now. <laughs> no. Uh, so, I'm sure it was the same with Donnie Darko. Um, the the Space Jam movie website, which is one of the first websites about a movie ever. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> ever, just ever. Ever. Oh. Has been running on like like somebody forgot about it and it's just been running on Sony's website since 1997 or something like that in the pristine late 90s website and it's just like it's just there and people just every once in a while 
People are like, hey, remember? Remember that website? Well, it's I, still going. I always loved the Donnie Darko website because, well, I loved the Donnie Darko movie at the time that it came out. And then the website was, like, so cutting edge at the time that it was released because it was um, really utilizing. It's still there. It's still there. Check it out. So spacejam.com. It, it, it's hard to see, but, like, yes, those are GIFs floating <laughs> In a background that's just like a, a small rectangle multiplied, you know, just like looped over and over and over and over. Oh, I love websites like that. Look at that. But if we could talk for a second about Ooh, the, the, the I'm mourning. I'm in mourning about the Donnie Darko I had this. I had this background on my website at members.awl.com slash whatever it was. Anyway, yeah. Donnie Darko. Ge GeoCities. Yes. No, GeoCities. Pshaw. <laughs> anyway. Angel Fire is worse. No, somebody, so. somebody was referencing something, and I was like, oh, Donnie Darko. And so I went to link the, the website, because I still think that that website was so cool. And then I was like, oh, no, it's not there. But there is an archive of it. Somebody has created an archive of the website, which That's I was nice. relieved about. Because hmm. um, it, it's <laughs> definitely, like, a really cool... It, like experience of the film and I was a media arts major so I loved like multimedia and using computers as storytelling the idea of using a website as a storytelling device and that website I felt like was such a great example of that mm -hmm. so anyway if you wanted to geek out <laughs> and watch Donnie Darko and then go to the website you can still find it if you google Donnie Darko website and then you'll find an archive of it yeah, that's yes. so cool. Yes. Yeah. And you have to wear headphones because the soundscape of the website is very good. It's very well intentioned. <sighs> if anybody uh, was, who what, was involved what, in that what, what could year? listen to me telling you 20 years later that I love it so much. 20 plus. And when did the movie come out? You know, I remember really like loving it when I was in grad school. Grad school, I think. Maybe or maybe it was, uh, maybe hmm. it was Fredonia. Probably because... It felt it feels like one of those websites because our our degree at the time was based on the idea that you would send people a CD ROM for whatever reason, be it's like part of your band or you're like a director or a lot of short films on CD ROMs, uh, and there would be like some kind of a multimedia experience on the mm -hmm. disc that would just pop up and play on your computer, mm -hmm. and you would you know it'd be like. Like a really amazing interactive website that those don't really exist anymore. Well, there were like there were startups of magazines at the time that uh. were trying to do that. That you would get a magazine CD ROM in the mail every month, and that you would experience the articles instead of just reading <laughs> reading them. It does sound a little <laughs> funny. But... Sounds hokey. <laughs> and I'm trying to think of the name. There was one specifically that I had a few. Uh, like CDs of because they were really trying like the the haunted Halloween no 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 magazine that's haunted attractions no that oh, okay. and that was different that, that sounds like a dating website actually haunted attractions yes <laughs> no that's <laughs> like a like a like a goth girl uh, no that's probably know, still boy. going haunted attractions was a <laughs> quarterly magazine based on um, like dark rides around the country and around the world people like me who are really into dark rides like so a dark ride is like um, a ride that uh, is happens in the dark and then you are mm -hmm. taken through the ride like by the ride itself so like um a lot of disney rides are dark rides like uh, peter pan dark ride but so this you're is you're, you're indoors there's no windows you're not outdoors you're right in, you're inside yes you're inside like the haunted it's, mansion at disney world dark th ride. There, there's lighting yeah <laughs> yeah there's lighting inside yes, it, yes but it's dark because it's um it's it's theatrical yes it's a theatrical ride so Haunted Attractions magazine. Yeah. Yes, dark, but no, dark this ride. was different. It started also, with it an L. Like... I actually cannot think of the name of the magazine, but I'm pretty sure I'm it started sure with an will L. At some point, but yes, it doesn't matter. Yeah, but no, no, th those things were so interesting, and the idea of like mailing somebody an experience sounds like a really cool hipstery kind of thing to do. Like, guys, we're gonna get a CD in the mail, <laughs> and it's gonna like fire up on our computer. And that's the only way you can access something like that's so cool. Like by today's standards, uh, being able to limit the amount of people who can access something is so hip and so trendy. <laughs> yeah. Well, for, remember for real. when business cards were CD-ROMs? Yes. There was there was a couple <laughs> years there where you would get a, a CD-ROM and it would literally not even be round. It would be like this rounded rectangle. Like an Here, oval. Fill, fill my other side of my rectangle. There you go. There you go. Like that. Oh, it's a heart. Oh, oh now it's a rectangle. <laughs> 
heart rectangle. Okay, whatever. Do you remember when we it. did this at Madame Tussauds where we got a... Uh, oh, we got our wax hands. We got a wax... Wait, you can get... um For an extra 10 bucks, you could get your wax hands done as part of this deal that they had. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And you like, and they have you like dip your hands into this boiling wax and hold it there. And the guy's like holding you down to make sure you get like a good amount of wax built up on yourself and then bring it up and mold it into a shape. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I remember. You know what part I remember the most though? Not the wax part, but the <laughs> ice water part before you go into the hot wax because it turns out I'm very sensitive to very, very cold yeah. uh, environments and it was painful. <laughs> I was having a very hard time keeping my hand in the ice water. <laughs> and then when it went into the hot, I was like, this is the <laughs> best and worst thing that could ever be happening right now. <laughs> it just hurt a lot. Oh, no. But, um, so much for date night. Oh, well. Oh, well. It was cool, though, that we were we went to Madame Tussauds because they had a VR um, experience. VR Ghostbusters. When the all-female yes. Ghostbusters movie came out, there was a... Uh... Of course, there was like a tie-in, like everybody had tie-in, mm -hmm. uh, and it was actually a lot of fun. It was really cool. That yeah. was the first walk-through VR thing, and the only one I think I've ever done, and it was, it was the awesome. First of its, the first of its kind in the West. Now it's like, um, you get those uh, at a lot of different places, well, like especially in Asia. I still haven't done another one since, but that one was really cool. Yeah, the, I, I was going to do it in Thailand mm -hmm. with, with uh, Christina when we went, mm -hmm. but it was like the equivalent of $150 in Thailand and I was like what that's a lot of money what? In, yeah and bought yeah I was yeah. just like why is this so expensive I mean like we ate really good you know what time we went to a Korean barbecue in Thailand uh, and just like blew our daily uh, like yeah. uh, like our daily or I think our weekly allowance for money just like blew it because it was so amazing but no way was gonna do it for like a, a 30 minute VR experience as for as cool as it looked you know, that just reminded me that the last place that I ate out before uh, all the uh, social distancing and quarantining happened yes. was I went out with my friend Susie and we went to Thai food and I was <laughs> sitting there and I thought to myself, you know, what? I still remember the two words I learned in Thai, uh, which was Sawadika and Kapkunka. But the problem is, is I'm horrible at languages. Like my, my older <laughs> no. son is really struggles with handwriting. I very much struggle with languages. And I think that I will probably likely struggle with this my entire life. For whatever reason, my brain, it just does not remember the things. Like I will remember certain things, but then not other things. And like, I just can't string things together. So all I can remember in Thai is Kapkunka and Sawadika. And I know one means thank you and the other means hello, but I do not ever remember <laughs> Remember which one and so then I very confidently mm. said uh, Kapkunka after somebody like uh, gave us something and they were so surprised and they kind of went ha, 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 and laughed and waved <laughs> and, went back. and I turned to Susie and I said oh I think I just messed that up and I looked it up and I <laughs> And you I, were right. I was right. I had done it right. So she was just super surprised that I even knew like a word or maybe I said it wrong. I don't know. But she, but then, uh, but then at the end I, uh, I, I said Kapkunka and I, I did a little bow and, and they said Kapkunka and it was like so sweet. It was Yay. really nice to be able to do that. You tried. I did try. You know, it's, it's so awesome when, when, you know, when Westerners try like yes. a little bit. And now that I'm, that Leaf, uh, my our older son, he's seven, he takes Mandarin at his school. And so he has um, these very basic Mandarin lessons. Um, and I'm starting to <laughs> try to learn Mandarin. And the way that I get Leaf to do his lesson is by teaching me. Because <laughs> I'm so bad. I know one, two, three. And then for whatever reason, I can never remember four. But I think I got five. Five well, is, well, What is it? Uh, one, two, three is E, er, su, e, wait, no, oh, God, E, er, son, E, er, son, uh, something, U, Leo, something, something, <laughs> no, done, see, yeah, and Leaf would oh, be like, good. mama, because uh, I just, <laughs> he's gone over with me so many times, but oh, I can man. remember maybe one extra number a day in here. There's That's a good. lot going on. And I just, you know, there's not enough room for another language. <laughs> it's like I'd have to delete some important things to make room for the language. But I'm learning to count to 10 in Mandarin. And then 
and then a little more than She's 10. She's trying, guys. E or son. But you know what's tr tricky is that I, I'm almost positive that in Japanese it's the same one, two, three. No. No? It's each, ni, son. Oh, each, ni, son. See? Son is three in both oh, of them. And so nice. uh, I learned the first five numbers, or at least the first four in Japanese for Suzuki class, which is a movement class that I took in uh, graduate school. And so I keep <laughs> conflating the two mm -hmm. because they're tonal-ish languages. Maybe they have, I know they probably sound nothing alike to... Well, they, they do have commonalities in their origin. Okay, so, uh, and you know, my brain, it's just sad in there about the languages thing. I can count to 10 in Spanish very mm -hmm. well. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. But, Wait, uh, maybe just slow it down a little bit. E no, don't be mean. No. Slow clap means not, Good job. not sincere. Good job, Thank sweetheart. You. you can count to 10 in Spanish like a champ. <sighs> it took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so I do feel proud of that actually yeah. and I am going to by the end of the summer be able to count confidently to 10 in Mandarin thank Yay, you that's Heath, very nice my 7 year old for teaching if, me if only um, and toe means head in yeah Mandarin. yeah that's cool toe jiao <laughs> I don't know I'm going to try yep. she means knee does it? yeah she happy knees she she? yeah Miss Wen, who is the Mandarin teacher, says happy knees. She. Zhao Zhu is toes. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning head, shoulders, knees, and toes. To Zhan Bao. She Zhao Zhu. She Zhao Zhu. Is anybody who knows Mandarin, let me know how I did there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my quarantine lesson. Yeah. Mandarin. Well, I wonder what, what our audience, um, what, what languages you guys have learned recently because you know as like an adult because when you're a mm -hmm. kid it's like you just like soak it up you have to go to these mandatory classes in like high school you know everybody learns like a language at some point or if there was a language that you could learn that you haven't learned yet what language would it be for me mm -hmm. french yeah that would have been so helpful like multiple times now in my life how many times uh i'm gonna say at least 20 Wow, that at least many. twenty times. Yes, because every single time there's a grouping of international puppeteers. The common language that everybody wants to speak in is French. Maybe the one that they all know is English, but what do they all want to speak in? <laughs> French. And what do I not know? French. Like not even a, like hardly any. And I, I was in France in this past September, and it was amazing. And I was at the World Puppetry Festival, and I could say bonjour and merci and uh, merci beaucoup. <laughs> and that's about it. Un, deux, trois. <laughs> okay. That's I right. can do one, two, three in almost anything. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> then after that, woo. <laughs> yeah. I, I, think I think that's common. I want to say it's common. What, um, what language would you learn if you could learn any language right I now? I mean Japanese because Japanese. but but yeah I've been thinking about this so a lot. So you could watch all the animes without the subtitles? Well I mean some people do that. A I lot know. of people do that. I know that, that's that why I said that. Because it was the only way to experience a lot of this stuff How it was originally the made. Well, How it was meant to be watched. I mean kind of uh, there's cultural differences. Yeah but but anyways um no I've been thinking about this a lot. So uh back back in the I mean you could say like even back in the 70s Back in the 80s, back in the 90s, uh, especially 80s and 90s, there was a lot of um, uh, performance um, and art coming into our country from Japan. Like Japan's cultural exports were just rocking the United States. Not so much the older people, but definitely the younger people. I guess like maybe in the 80s, like sushi became like a big thing and um, like uh, other art forms, but definitely like uh, with kids or like me, like anime and uh, video games were like kind of this like this way to look this way into this other culture that you knew nothing about like what is so completely different from your country something coming in from a totally different country that looks and sounds and behaves differently because it's based on a completely different set of cultural values uh, especially when it came to detailed animation uh, which is why some of the best animated stuff back in the 80s came straight over from Japan, you know, or even the 70s, like with Kimba, the White Lion, 
Astro Boy. Voltron. You know, uh, I mean, like, even, like, lower-budget stuff, like Voltron. <laughs> I just loved yeah. Voltron. I really loved Voltron. But even the, even Voltron just blew anything Filmation was doing, like, uh, that's he, He-Man, like, just out of the water, or what Deke was doing with, like, Inspector mm-hmm. Gadget, etc. Like, all this, like, Western Morn animation stuff couldn't hold a candle at that time to what was happening over in the East. Can Can you remember what the first anime was that you saw as a kid that you that you you knew something was special about it and different about it and that you just wanted to watch it yeah what was it well all right so two two things i have one and i i'm wondering what yours is so um when we go to my grandma and grandpa's house uh, this fancy trailer park gated community down in florida uh you could have a gated community trailer park and make your trailers look really, really nice. Yeah, there. Yeah, I've yeah. I've visited some amazing trailers. You don't call it a trailer park, no. right? It's, it's called a, a community. That's right. But in actuality, homes. they're trailers, but they're really nice ones. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you went there. So we so we went there, uh, and it was um, it was like doubles and stuff. But anyway, so uh, if you got up early enough and snuck over to the TV. And turned it on, turned the volume down so you could listen without anybody else, like, you know, waking up and telling you to change the channel, which my grandpa always did. You could watch uh, stuff early on in the morning that no one in the world had ever seen before. That, that's what it felt like. It was like watching Black and White Zorro at, at like 5 a.m. before the infomercial started. You know, like 30 Zorro. Uh, but there was this one show that came out of, I think, Montreal or France. It was probably France. Same company, I think, that did Mysterious Cities of Gold, um, called Spartacus. Oh, I remember Spartacus. And it was like this this wanderer who had like a crossbow on his arm, and he was uh, he was like darker skinned or Native American or, or or something, and he had like the two kid sidekicks, and it was like this dystopian apocalyptic future with robots, and he didn't say much, but he was just like this real strong guy who was always gonna try and win but this is real just like mysterious cities of gold every once in a while there's a real horror element to it Mm -hmm. where it was like something really bad is gonna happen and it's not like oh no this is gonna be over by the end of this episode it's like no No. it was episodic too like yeah it was like a serial Mm -hmm. yeah so the like a lot of french cartoons you know i i had one that i was gonna say but now i'm gonna back it up and say there's another one so so okay yeah. So the one that you just reminded me of yes. was Belle and Sebastian. Oh uh, yes. Which was episodic yeah. and like intense and and like So to what describe it a little bit. Well it was about a young boy named Sebastian and he uh had run away from his um I think adoptive home to then be or something had happened to his mother. He couldn't find his mother so he he, he and he was with what relatives his, but his mother was everybody said his mother has had died but he didn't believe them right and he was the only one who who was like no she's still alive and they're like right. she's a dead kid right and so then he runs off into the swiss alps but then there's a dog that he uh finds a sheep dog um named bell and so then they have these uh travels together but they're both on the run like there's right. a loose dog you know, so people are trying to capture Belle. People are also trying to capture well, Sebastian. She was, like, she was wanted for murder, though. Like, oh. this dog was, like, this beast. She was big. She was big. And, like, lethal looking. And, and there was this, some kind of, like, miscommunication about, like... You remember <laughs> Maybe it was, like, this DMX uh, music video where, like, somebody who looks just like him is wanted for murder. And everyone's like, it's him. And he's like, I didn't do anything. Uh, it was kind of like that with Belle and Sebastian. But, but she, was, she was, like, this maternal, caring... Yes could murder somebody who messes with my my uh, my little boy it was uh, very dog high stakes it was yeah. very high stakes but then the other one that i i originally asked this question about mm-hmm. was um so do you remember when the disney channel and some other paid cable channels uh when they weren't on they would be scrambled and so do you know <laughs> what i mean when i say that oh yes so, like it was like they would take the color bars that you would see before, like, a, a show and, like, overlay them and, like, wiggle them around in front of the picture. But then you could still hear the audio from, uh, no, Karen's asking if that show is live action. Belle and Sebastian was animated. No, it's animated. And so this thing that I'm uh, describing right now is animated, too. So so Disney Channel, most of the time, would be scrambled. <laughs> 
And I, I remember being in the pharmacy, I think it was Rite Aid in my hometown, while my parents were looking for something and they had a TV on in the Rite Aid. Ooh. And I know. And so I would just stand there and watch. <laughs> and they had the Disney Channel on. And there was this show on that I'd never seen before and it had a baby unicorn on it. And it had pink hair and this little horn. And I, the, I was just transfixed. The eyes looked just like the eyes from the characters in Voltron that I loved so much. And there, so was, there's already something very familiar. Plus, it was a unicorn. It was so cute. And so I was just like, what is that? And then my parents were like, no, we have to go. <laughs> yes. It's time to go. Uh-huh. It's time to go grocery shopping. I'm like, no, no, no. no I just saw the most yay. amazing thing. And I'm never going to see it again. And then I, 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 I remember uh, trying to like watch the Disney Channel, because I would do that, you know, mm-hmm. through the scramble. Like I would program it to the Disney Channel and just listen to the Disney <laughs> Channel. And then one day they you, played what? that film. No, and I, the scramble? I, I oh got to, God. I only recognized it because the scramble like came together for half a second enough for me to see the unicorn. And I was like, oh, that's it. That's the movie. <laughs> but I didn't know what it was until I was in high school, like 12 years later or something. Oh. And then I was talking to my friend Bridget. I had a very good friend named Bridget. And I was describing it to her and she's like, oh yeah, that's called Unico. And I'm like, <gasps> you know and then she's like yeah i have it on vhs and i was like no and so i basically like ran right home after school with her and she dug it out and we watched it together and to wow. this day still one of my favorite movies i've not shown it to the kids because it's a little scary it is a horror movie for children it's awesome it's so great <laughs> and it's by tezuko uh, osamo tezuka who also did Astro Boy and I mean, Kimba he, the White he, Lion. He's the and... grandfather of all anime. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. You can yeah. watch it on YouTube, I'm he's, pretty he's sure. He's amazing. So this is Kimba, or no, this is uh, Unico and the I, the Magic Island or something like that. Well, there's like there's like three Unico movies. Yes, but this one only specifically. One, only one of them is good. It's the one with Toby <laughs> and the puppets. So. It's so weird. And well, you wonder why I became a puppeteer. I mean, it's the one about the puppets. It's so weird. <laughs> It's, it's like, it's awesome. wow, there's this cute little unicorn, and he just want, loves everybody, and he wants to be everybody's friend. Don't and, and give it has, away. And he has, like, a couple friends in the just forest. Watch it. Everything looks great. Oh, yeah. And then there's no, this magician crazy. who's turning people to stone, and there's no one no, left alive in this troubled. entire kingdom. And, oh, my God, what's going to happen when these people get to, like, oh, everything is just horrible. And it's no, just, no, like, no. They're this troubled. insane they magician have... is just turning people into pieces of his wall. They're it's, flawed. Ah! They are flawed <laughs> characters. It's setting the Ugh. stage for greater anime oh, later it, it, on. It's, a, it's such a great movie. You got you got to see it. You. It's amazing. Yeah, Yes. But don't show it to you. No, it's not. It's, it's horrifying. It's not appropriate for like, I'd say nine and under oh, maybe. But it's so it's so easily quotable too. Oh, it's Anything so good. The, the villain says. Toby. Toby. Like, oh God, he's coming. <laughs> he's coming. Actually, Hide. unbeknownst to us, uh, our one of our sons named one of our pets at one point Toby. Oh yeah, Toby. And, and we looked at him like. And we were like, like oh no. <laughs> But we couldn't tell him. So we were like, okay, Toby. (laughs) Oh, that movie. That movie. You know know what uh, what Western uh, movie gave me that same kind of horror vibes, too, was... um uh, Rainbow, Rainbow Bright and the Star Stealer. Oh, yeah. Which is like... We watched that on a Girl Scout lock-in at the YMCA. <laughs> so Rainbow Bright, the TV <laughs> show, was, you know, just like Rainbow Bright and her colorful friends... <laughs> And they're slaves. <laughs> Who they're, they they get their little um, pint-sized slaves to mine the uh, rainbow crystals for them to power the their sprites. their devices. They're called and they, sprites. And they live in the nice houses, and their sprite slaves live in the anyway. anyway so somebody steals their sprite slaves one day, and they're like, "Oh man, the stars, what are you gonna do?" Mining the star, the color stars. Yeah, they they get the, their the slaves sprinkles. to go be their somebody else's slaves, and they're like, "Oh man, we gotta we gotta put a stop to that." And they introduce like this. This uh, older teenage girl, like villain, who is very bossy, very eighties uh, uh, girl villain, who just wants to have her own way. Anyway, so in that movie, everything's fine until they get to the point where they've brainwashed or mind mushed some of the characters who you knew and loved from the TV show, and all of a sudden. 
They're not responding to their names or anything. They're just mindless slaves. And then just that idea happened in the Dark Crystal. Oh, the happened in a, yeah, happened in a bunch of other 80s things where just like, oh, like the main characters losing their mind because their best friend no longer responds to their own name or anything about them and they have to like snap them out of it and they can't and it's heartbreaking. Hmm. I never thought about that as being a theme in 80s cartoons, but yes. People were really afraid about some um, brainwashing in the 80s, which is hilarious because all those people are brainwashed now. Oh, Chad. Thanks. Stop. Fox New What? I don't know. I what? Like, I mean, not everybody. No, no, it's true. We don't want to be it's ageist true. It's here. Not everybody. We won't use the B word. <laughs> because um, some people take offense to that. Not the one you think. Oh, Nick uh, Anderson says Pokemon <sighs> are all slaves, technically. And Karen says she loved Kimba. Pokemon Yay. is is about dog fighting. It's true, but they justify it by saying that the Pokemon are kind of like competitive against each other, and they kind of like all want to fight. So. So it, it kind of works out in this weird way, but yeah, you're, you're, you're right. And there's been a lot of talk about that. Yeah, when the Pokemon Go first came out, PETA was like against it. PETA's always ragging on Pokemon, P but PETA goes too far sometimes. PETA ragged on Cooking Mama, which is this video game about just cooking. And because you could cook with meat, PETA was like, PETA released this whole like anti-cooking Mama, which but Mama is like... She's so nice and cute and cuddly and amazing and it's like encouraging and it's all about learning cooking skills through a DS. Peter went too far that day. <laughs> oh, Nick says that they weren't. It's not that it was a brainwash theme. It's tribalist group think. Oh, tribalist group think. In my yeah. opinion. Back in the 80s, they're like, if you listen to this message that's scrambled backwards on a cassette tape, it's going to implant ideas in your brain. I guess those people are always kind of dumb and impressionable. But, now they're just older and dumb and impressionable. But, no, no, no. But that's a reoccurring theme throughout history of like, you know, the young kids are into things the old people don't understand. Yeah. And now the, they're going to hell. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yes. Yep. But, but now I feel like there's an encur like a movement to encourage kids to play games like D&D, &D, whereas like when I was in high school, it was definitely like, oh no, only the weird kids playing D&D, &D, and you're not... <laughs> only we only the weird kids. I was not allowed holding to play D&D. No. &D. Um, oh no, we were totally stigmatized. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I played D&D &D in middle school, in high school, and during that time, which is the mid-90s to late-90s, Oh, they were still talking about, you know, like, like mazes and monsters, fever, you know, like the, the, the devil was going to get on people and that kids talked about it too. Cause that's all we knew. We didn't know any of like the good side. People didn't talk about it as being like creativity and imagination playground and, you no. know, gr getting kids to just do something together indoors on a weekday instead of being outside causing trouble oh no i would uh -huh. go to my friend sarah's house we would play with some ouija board stuff and then we would do <laughs> D, D. so i mean it was <laughs> we were definitely like oh is this gonna make us bad awesome let's do it Dang. like yeah well <laughs> we were summoning things See, what, what was really dumb was that like i think people know this now but the D, D kids are harmless they're not the kids no, that were like smarties. smoking cigarettes, like like behind the bleachers and getting tattoos, like the mm -hmm. skater kids with the tattoos. Those are the kids that that everyone was really concerned about, like or they should have been concerned about. Um, let's see who else has played D and D in this chat room. Let's see, Nick Anderson, maybe. Oh yes, Nick says uh, his mom mm -hmm. was like, "They're just rolling dice and talking." You know, Weezer <laughs> did a reference. Um, to uh, D and D and on their Weezer, first album. Weezers are nerds, so I know. Did you know? I'm almost positive. I should fact check this so before I say it out loud that they are from Stores, Connecticut, where I went to grad school. Yeah. Yeah. Look, you sure. have a you have a device. Why don't we uh when we look this up right yeah, now? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I whenever they um reference the twelve sided die in in the in my garage song, I'm always like, oh, if I pass by that house, I probably have. Which garage is it? <laughs> yeah, right, there's probably a specific garage that it, that he was talking about. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So I would be like driving through stores and being like, is it that one? Is it that one? Which garage is it? <laughs> you know. That that song was it had comic book references. It was like um, like a poster of kitty pride and nightcrawler too 
<laughs> They're waiting there for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good album. Their first album was so good. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, and, and Karen Falk, her daughter, did this afternoon with her college group who are scattered across the country. Yeah, man, there's so many tools for doing D&D online. Although my favorite, my favorite of all was watching people do it live as an audience member was so fun. And uh, th there's many podcasts, like really famous podcasts mm -hmm. online now that are just D&D &D podcasts that are amazing to listen to. I never found the, the right group. Me neither. Maybe we should find maybe make that happen as adults or maybe as our kids get older, we will, that will yeah. naturally happen for us. That could be fun. I like. All right, so so here, here's my D&D &D dating profile, right? So no, because it's, you know, like like getting friends, like D&D &D friends, you want to land with the right click. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of like an audition. It's kind of like speed dating. You're like, all right, so here's my, my D and D dating profile. And you can, you can do one too, if you feel so inclined. So, uh, <laughs> I, I like to have a good time. I like to have fun. I appreciate some lore, right? But I also <laughs> like to be super goofy. However, I don't just like to hee haw all night, right? No, I like to get to the point, And if you're taking too much time figuring out what's happening inside the rule books, I lose interest quickly. Boom. I like props. <laughs> <laughs> we went to, I used to do this show called Little Miss Gamer. And so I would get invited to um, video game conference cons. Yes. And um, one time we went to one at um, Long Island, Suffolk, Suffolk, uh, what was that school called? Stony Brook. Stony Brook University. We went they twice. had Okay, well I remember the one this one time that we went to that one. Yes. At Stony Brook. It was a very nice con. It was quite big for being at a university. Do you remember and the name? The that's, con? That's, that's where we first met. Fort ninety himself. Matt yeah, Hawkins. Matt. Hi. Yeah. Yes. What's up, Matt? Hi, Matt. I think he's a dad now too, I'm pretty sure. Isn't everyone a dad at this point? I mean, come on. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I think he is. Um, let's see. So I remember way back in the back of the big room, they had the D and D tables all set up, but they had like real walls. Like they had created a dungeon with like all of these props and things and like real monsters and stuff, like kind of like Warhammer type of things, but like things I hadn't seen before because I, I just, that's, that's just not the crafting community I hang out with. Right. Like my crafters don't paint miniatures. My crafters like <laughs> make, build puppets. And, and so, and, and they had the whole table set up. It was cool. And, and, and maybe what you didn't realize was like, we were looking at like $3,000 worth of miniatures. No, I had no idea. I was just like, this is awesome. Look at yeah. this. This is like a dollhouse, but it's like dungeon stuff. So it was really cool. That's what that's what I mean cool. when I say I like props. So like I <laughs> I liked seeing the dungeon. I liked seeing the figure being in the room and then trying to traverse to the next room or whatever is gonna happen. Yeah. So well, that was, that was like um, a lot of people grew up uh, with he something called Hero Quest. Mm -hmm. It's basically that, but it was it was pre made adventures. You could go on, I guess, afterwards. But it was like it was like ten ten adventures that they would set up like, here's all the stats. Here's the person who's going to be telling the story. You know, this is your way into basically like your your way into D and D. Uh, but what my way into D and D was uh, back back in the day, and they they've riffed on this sense. They've made it actually cool sense. But uh, you would get an audio disc with kind of like like a beginner's guide to D and D. I think it was like with a D and D version two or something. Uh, you would play tracks on the audio CD whenever you got into a new room. Is yeah. this like the Nightmare board game? Yes, except it was just it was just a disc. Which I love I love that board game. So it was so <laughs> so so it was, it was like you get <laughs> the first track was like simulating what it would be like 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 what you are like getting your friends together. Hey guys, hey. My older brother has this D&D &D book. Wow, is that really cool? Yeah, check this out. Look, and you can be uh, the wizard. Oh, cool, I'll be the wizard. And you can be, this is like this audio drama, right? <laughs> and then they and then they start doing the spooky voices. They're like, wow, that's really <laughs> cool. Keep doing the spooky voice. Okay, you look into the castle depths 
and you, the door creaks open. You can smell the must of ogre poop. And you're like, wow, that's amazing. Uh, but then they would just like do straight, just like character voices after that <laughs> for like 10 tracks, right? Uh, but at the end of the adventure, uh, like you play, you press play because you've gotten into the final room, right? And it's Bone Nasher, the, the ogre. And I only remember his name because we press play and all of a sudden you're like, who dares come to the lair of Bone Nasher? I'm like, oh my God, it's, it's the Macho Man. <laughs> it's the Macho Man. Yeah. <laughs> From wrestling, if you guys don't uh, know. Oh, dude, yeah. Everybody knows the Macho Man Randy Savage. Well, or or uh, Snap Into Slim Jim. Oh, he's a cultural icon. It's amazing. <laughs> amazing. But oh, it was it's such a, a classic moment. And I was so happy. Whenever I hear the Macho Man, I'm happy. But I was just like, oh, this is great. And, but that was the only one they ever did. Uh, and it was kind of like a lame, like, beginner's quest. They since have come back and, and have redone that quest to make it really cool. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like, like in video games, too. They're like, you like this from your childhood? We remixed it to actually make it cool. People who grew up on this, like, helped out to make it awesome. Do you think they remixed Nightmare the board game? They should. So for those of you who never, it is on YouTube. I've watched it. It's so it's so amazing. <laughs> so there was this board game that I used to play at my friend Leah's house mm -hmm. called Nightmare. And what you would do is you'd have a VHS tape, and there is a pretty like not so interesting board game that you would be playing. And you would at the very beginning of the board game, you put the VHS tape in fully rewound, and you hit play. And then you start playing the board game and the, nothing would be happening on the TV for a very long time. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the <laughs> Crypt Keeper would be like, -ha -ha! and he'd be like, I'm here to disrupt your game. Who's ever in the lead? You must do this horrible thing. -ha -ha! And then he would like fade off into the background and then blackness oh, for a long time. Total jump scare. Oh, Just I like, loved it. Everyone's it was, like, ah! Oh, and it was the best because like after you played a few times, you knew that something was going to happen soon. So you'd yes. be like, go, no, you go, no, you go. It's like kind of <laughs> like hot potato because you knew that he was going to be like, bum, like at any second. Yes. <laughs> It was the best. Yeah. Nightmare of the board game. It was great. I mean, VHS, I think that was, there's been a documentary. I, I screened a documentary about VHS board games at, at our film oh, festival did? years ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd love to this, see this, that one. They did a great job about, like, going back and interviewing all these people, you know, who had participated. There was, um, the very first one was Clue. I was just going to say, wasn't there a Clue one? Yes. yes. And that was, that was what the majority of, mm -hmm. of this one was. There's been many um, documentaries about that, about that that era, the Holly Weird era. But no, Clue, the board game, was the very first one. The person who signed up to do it, they like, oh, like, like elbowed their way into the job and then f discovered that they had no idea what they were going to do and basically had to like write the entire thing from scratch. But the way they figured it out became like the blueprint for everyone since. And, and the way they did it was clever in a way that no other one was. Mm. And that was, you had a, just one VHS tape, and uh, instead of having the, t the tape play the entire time, you just had like, you had like a, f like you had different games. Mm -hmm. So you had a five minute sequence and you had to pay very close attention to every single detail that was happening. They bring you through, like they show you all the characters and they all have like a couple of scenes here and there. And then the narrator comes back up and he's like, okay, now pause the tape and follow these instructions. And the instructions are based based on uh, what you saw or what you think you saw happening. Uh, and then you would kind of play like the normal clue game based on that. Then you go back to the tape and you play it again. He's like, okay, now we're in uh, like scene number two, somebody has gotten murdered and you have to try and then, so every time you have a, like a scene, you have to try and remember what happened, you know, way back when you played like the first five minutes and sometimes you could go back and cheat and, you know, and rewatch it and stuff. But like, it was really interesting and I don't think anybody understood. In fact, when we played it live at the <clears throat> film festival, People were like, what? Like, they didn't quite get... Like, you have to play it a couple of times to understand, like, did how you, you're supposed to play. Did you own this game? Or did you know somebody that owned the game? No, but at the time that I was running this film festival for, for five years, a video game film festival, um, uh, it, it, it was newsworthy that somebody was doing a documentary, a good one, on the Clue <clears throat> board game, and that people should understand 
that if you're into these v these VHS board games, that this was the first one, and it's the and it's one of the most special. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So yeah. look it up. Clue clue the VHS board game documentary. I'm sure it's still on on YouTube somewhere. Is there a game that one of your friends had at their house that you did not have that you really loved to play? I mean, yeah, video games. Okay. <laughs> well, well, was so what was that? Yeah. Or was that just like a, a general console that That's, they had that you did not no, have? Yeah, the Super Nintendo. Just that, in that general. Yep. Yeah. Same. I have to say. Super Nintendo. We did not have a Super Nintendo. You know who had the Super Nintendo? Sarah Campbell. You're not watching this probably, Sarah, but <laughs> we're friends. And uh, you know this because I would come over to your house and just look longingly as not just you played, but your mom and your brother. They all played. The whole family played on Aww. the Super Nintendo. And I would just be like, I want the Super Nintendo. And my parents would say, well, honey, you have an Atari. <laughs> you have an Atom, which was like a ColecoVision computer and you have a Barely. nintendo you have enough games you have enough you do not need a super nintendo and i was like but i do i do <laughs> did you not see the the things that can happen yoshi exists only on the super nintendo like i need yoshi in my life and so i would go to sarah's house and i would just replay the first level of the first world over and over and over again and yes. eat cactuses that's just what I did. I would Aww. just eat the cactus over and over with That's Yoshi. That's so nice. Yeah. Fond memories of Yay. eating cactuses with Yoshi. But that was when her mom wasn't playing. Oh, wow. <laughs> her That's mom cool was that a their parents huge played. gamer. Well, her dad wasn't home a lot. Her dad was a, a doctor, so he was off, um, you know, healing all of Leroy. Mm -hmm. But um, her mom was home quite a bit with them, and uh, she really liked playing video games. I wonder if she still does. Hmm. Um Maybe. Uh, and then her and her brother, Sarah and her brother, also played video games a lot. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Oh, it was for me. It was um, Final Fantasy VI mm -hmm. was like the game. Like everybody knew, it was it was epic. The graphics looked like 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 nothing you'd ever seen before. And then Chrono Trigger, same mm -hmm. thing. Whereas like when you saw it in action, you just stopped. You know, and not too many games today can have that same. All right, I, I take the back because that, that that that's crap. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I want to say um, uh, every generation that's video game console generation. So every five to six years or so, there's a game that makes everybody stop and go like, "What is that? And how can I play it?" And uh, for this previous generation, it was Fortnite. Generation before that, it was Minecraft. You know, um, the best selling video games uh, every single generation every year are sports games you know but which is funny because nobody nobody recognizes that fact um but every generation every five years everyone's like what is that and it's like bleeding edge cool <laughs> and happens to be a video game well you know nick asks in what ways does your affinity for D, &D flow into your puppetry oh not at all i mean you know with with D, &D there's a lot of improv so if you're a good improviser if you're mm -hmm. like yeah you would adjust to your role in this, but uh, uh, I don't know. Storytelling voices, yeah. things like that, having fun, you know, flexing your creative muscle. Yeah. You know. I mean, a lot of um, a lot of very distinct memories <laughs> in my life have come from D and D sessions. Oh man, did I ever tell you I played D and D with Shale once? No. So so, wh when I was living alone in Albany. Uh, I would drive to my friends' houses, and I didn't know anybody in Albany. And this was like uh, back when we, we just first started dating again. Mm -hmm. uh, and you you were in uh, Massachusetts or Connecticut, Connecticut excuse me, at Connecticut. UConn. I was in Albany. That's a long drive. Yes. You know, so um, I would have to drive to see my friends. Mm -hmm. So I have to drive to uh, Lee, Connecticut, which is um, a forty-minute drive to see my friends. Uh, I would have to drive four hours south for parties at Joe Cam's place. Uh, and um, then I would like occasionally drive to like Middletown, uh, New York mm -hmm. to see uh, Shale. Mm -hmm. And one time he's like, hey, my friends, because he's really big into D&D. He's like, hey, my friends are doing a D&D &D session. It's okay. You just, you just, br just come on in. It'll be, it'll be a good time. <laughs> oh, God. It was like... It's like a D and D nightmare. Oh no! But but it's like fair enough. It was not my group. 
you know, I was not a regular. What I didn't know anybody there. Uh, I grew to know them really quickly, uh, but it was like I was just jumping into somebody else's session. You know, uh, it was set up so that it would be okay. We played this game called Exalted, which is like if you want to play not as just like your regular schmuck uh, character just starting out. If you want to play as like a level nine thousand character and roll twenty dice at once when you attack and have that kind of feeling like that's this is the game for you okay. apparently uh but we one of the guys was like 500 pounds mm -hmm. i never like played D D with a guy who, who did not get up the entire time because he was like he had real problems okay. but he was really into his character like really into it and it, and the way the way that he played his character was like whoa what's happening here because it was like it was all dudes, but the people who played the women, everybody macked on them. So it was this weird, interesting thing of like, of like the characters are macking on the female characters who are also played by men in real life. Uh, and it was like this, this inter really interesting dynamic. Um, we didn't get super far in the game and I've definitely made everybody mad. Oh no! Be because it just we just didn't jive, you know. Okay. It was like when I perform improv uh, with, with 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 my troupe, man, my troupe, uh, my college troupe is still performing together. Uh, we're coming up on like <clears throat> twenty years, pretty pretty soon. We 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 perform together once a year. Uh, even like new people coming in, we all jive super well, and everyone's there to support each other. <clears throat> Here it was just like I was just everybody's talking, and I'm just just trying to get like something in you know it's like being like like the runt of the litter just like come on guys just let me in for a second and then when you do do something everybody's looking at you like okay yeah like the only thing the only thing that I ever the two actions that i ever got to take in that game were just like uh, uh i was so bored that i just started messing around and every, no. you know, people didn't like that yeah no. they're like are you sure like if you say if you try and like rabble rouse these the people that you're talking to into fighting against these evil people, they're just going to get wiped out. I was like, yeah, just do it. Yeah, who cares? And then when I tried to, um, when it was like fighting against the, the boss of the session, right? Mm -hmm. But they're like, hey, hey, we finally have something to fight. Let's fight it, guys, because that's what you do in D&D, &D, just fight, I guess. This group is really into fighting mm -hmm. and throwing 20 dice. <laughs> uh, when it finally came to term, because everybody's like, okay, I throw 20 dice and I'm attacking with this. And then I get this added to that. And then I get the special bonus because I know all that stuff, right? Came to me. I was like, eh, I'm not, not going to swing, actually. And they're like, you sure? I'm like, yeah, why? I hate this person. Because <laughs> me and this other character were bickering uh, against each other the whole time. It was fun. It was fun to, like, in character, like, bicker against somebody. Like, ah, I don't like you. You know, that, that was cool. Uh, but then when it came time, when that person was getting attacked by this big plant monster, they're like, don't you want to, don't you want to save them? Attack the monster? I was like, no, I hate them. Because the whole time I was bickering. Yes. We had nothing positive to say. Right. Yeah. That, that just like, everyone was like. That didn't fly. No. Everyone was like, just, just throw the dice. I was like, okay. I threw the dice. It didn't do much damage. And then the really morbidly obese guy was like, who was like had this like master slave relationship with his princess character uh <laughs> oh no was like Sounds complicated, i transform Chad. into a half bear beast and then i do this part of my attack with the bear form and then I was, it was very complicated and at the end he's like i did 75 percent of the damage blah uh and the dm was like i've tricked you because you weren't supposed to attack this and now you're all infected with plant spores see you next week and uh, yeah, everything about it. it was very memorable. Also, in that time, mm -hmm. I met this guy who legally changed his name to Clock Chaos, and he's like, "I'm a I'm a before nerdcore rappers were a thing. I'm a nerdcore rapper. My name is DJ Clock Chaos, but you just call me Clock Chaos." And everyone's like, "No one wanted to say to his face, that's not a good name. That's actually that that sounds really lame. Don't don't do it." Everyone's like, "You already legally changed it." Yeah, come on, guys. This is my name now. I'm Clock Chaos because they're like opposites. Sorry if you're if you're listening, Clock Chaos. I apologize, man. You know it's like li live in your truth. But at the time, I was like, whoa, whoa. You ever have a friend who like changed their name to something 
that you wouldn't change your name to? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know a lot of people who have actually legally changed their names, but I know people who have gone by different things. Yes. Yeah. Including me. I go by a different name. Hmm. But, um, hey, do you, not to change the subject, but we're going to probably wrap it up oh, pretty yes. soon. Um, do you have anything that you're looking forward to for next week? Um, or anything that you want to comment about, about the current state of, I mean, we're still living in New York City. Uh, we're still in Queens. Mm -hmm. um, things here are still really tough. We're still in our apartment. We put a swing in our apartment <laughs> in the doorway between the kitchen and the living room. Best parenting move ever. Uh, well, it came with its own challenges. What? Yeah. What do you mean? Because now the swing is used all the time. It's the best. <laughs> I'm just like, I use the swing. I can't, like, don't swing while I'm in the kitchen. And they're like, okay, I won't. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't want to get hit, guys. Don't swing. Yeah, but you can always unclip the swing. Yeah, but I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, I know. You know. No, but it's it's been really fun having the swing in the house, and there are other attachments too, like a rope and a ladder and the trapeze. But really, everybody just wants the swing, including me. I love the swing. I swing on it every day, and it's great. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've uh, next week is um, circus themed puppets because we do puppetry workshops every single day, and I will be doing puppets Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I have some ideas of what those are going to be. Man, you better uh, solidify those ideas soon. I I will. <laughs> don't you worry. And um, no, you're always you're always super consistent. I I bring it when That's it's right. time. They're ready, so don't you worry. Um. And we're, we're, we have some big things in the works in terms of uh, our life and uh, what we're going to be doing. We'll, we'll share more about that next week. Yeah. Um, but we're, we have some plans for the summer. And uh, we're not going away, but uh, we might not be here, which will be nice, I think. Yeah. Because we're, we're going to late, late dog it on the rich exodus. Well, you know what? We would really like to be able to go outside, to be able to go outside and um, and just be in some grass and not be concerned about, you know, other people and other people's dogs and people jogging. And um, so we're figuring that out and we will tell you more about that next week. But we're in the process of, um, of figuring out our summer plans right now. Um, but don't worry, nothing's going to stop in terms of uh, content. We're going to continue to do the podcast. We're going to continue to do the live shows on Fridays and the puppet DIYs every day, um, just from a different location. And uh, I think that it'll be good for our mental well-being because being in a two-bedroom apartment when you can't really leave ever has been really taxing on all of us. And we're already... Um, I think that it would be okay if the weather wasn't going to get hot, but even just the last couple of days, the weather got up to, uh, I think, 83 or 84 outside, and it was oh, hot man. in here. It was yeah. like 90 in our apartment because <clears throat> we're on the third floor. We're right under the roof. It's a three-story building, and um, it just gets hot. And we had all the windows open, and it was warm. And so, you know, and putting in the air conditioners is a whole to-do and then once the air conditioners are in, the windows don't get opened again because the air con the, the windows that get opened are the ones that the air conditioners go in. So, all that being said, I'm really much I'm very much looking forward to being in a place where um, we can just like walk outside or dry our laundry outside or <clears throat> have a little garden, grow some tomatoes and some cucumbers. I took a gardening class from their local library. Um, <laughs> Learned how to maybe grow some cucumbers with a trellis. So we're going to be all home homemakery. It's going to be You're going to be like Laura Ingalls <laughs> Wilder. Well, hopefully not because she almost died a million <laughs> times. But I would, <laughs> I would like to flex some of those, uh, some of those um, uh, country skills. I can't think of it. Homesteading skills. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. And we're going to bring our cat. And our other pets too, so. That's right, Aura. There she is down there yeah. under 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 this table right here. Get ready, Aura. You're going on an adventure with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it'll be good. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. Anything else we want to share before we say our good nights to everybody? We're doing okay. We're healthy yeah. still. 
Um, <clears throat> we, neither one, I don't think either any of our family has gotten the virus, but you don't know. That's the thing is that we could have had it and be completely asymptomatic, but we've been very, very, very careful. Uh, whenever we leave the house in any re way, we always have a mask on. We always are washing our hands. Um, so I think that we're, I think we were doing okay, but, um, it will be very nice to be able to walk around outside in the summer and let the kids like play in a sprinkler every now and then. So, right. Yeah. 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 Well, on that note, <laughs> uh, thanks so much everybody for, for watching. Uh, if you haven't visited, uh, our website for this podcast yet, head on over to, uh, puppet parent podcast dot com check it out right over there boom there it is our beautiful websites Yay. love that photo uh <laughs> you can listen to us on here it is we are not socially distant Woo! in that photo no <laughs> uh, the good old days before that you can listen to us on spotify overcast apple podcasts cast box Ooh, burping through that radio public pocket cast breaker and good old anchor which feeds all those things or just download our mp3s over at puppetparentpodcast.com. You know what's funny is I've been mm. watching like some like silly reality TV shows and oh, then just like, some, uh, no, what's, no, what's we're not gonna, no, that? I'm not gonna let, let anybody <laughs> know what trashy TV I watch. But what's interesting about watching them is uh, anytime I see anything that looks like normal life, I'm like, oh, look, look how <laughs> normal they're being. Wow, they're just. <sighs> Oh, like man. they're just saying hello and shaking hands or greeting each other or look they hugged oh that's so nice oh look that child is going to school now like i mean all of these things and it's so it's like in some ways it's comforting to watch like old things from another time and in other ways it's makes me sad because it reminds me of all the things that i can't do right now Aww. um but we did watch a couple weeks ago i think we might have mentioned this last weekend um, the Jerry Seinfeld stand up, and that was very funny. The new Jerry Seinfeld stand up, very yeah. good. Highly recommended. That then the other night we watched stand up, and I don't think either one of us laughed the entire time. I didn't really like it. We yeah. don't have to mention who it was. No, it was a very famous comedian who I, I've enjoyed. You know, when, when I've never do, heard uh, of him. He can't be that famous. I mean, he was playing like a sold out, a huge arena. He's very famous. Oh, I live under a rock. Anyway, yeah, his first <laughs> thing was about ripping on, um, ripping on feminists, and I was like, "Oh, all right." Oh, have... And then the next one was ripping on vegetarians and ripping on young people. So it was like, it was like, wow, all the check boxes for who I identify as as a person. He's just ripping them apart. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and but we kept watching, which was also interesting. Like neither of us was like, "Let's turn it off." Yeah, and I think or neither one was. You know, I, I would glance over at you. Maybe if you had glanced over at me at the same time, we would have been like, uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, I do, I just remembered one thing I want to mention, which was uh, two nights ago, or was it last? No, it was two nights ago, Friday night. You know, it was crazy. There was a fire. Oh, yeah. There was, it's midnight. We have all the windows open because Friday was the day that it was really hot. And, um, and it's still really warm at night. All the windows are open. And I'm, I'm working because I work until about 1 a.m. most nights. And um, I smell something and it smells like something's burning. And I'm like kind of starting to look around the apartment because it's not going away. And I'm like, I really don't think that that's something inside. I really don't. What could be burning? There's nothing that could be burning. And then I look out the window and I see a flame coming up over a roof from a block away. And I'm like... Oh my God. Oh my God. And so then I run into our bedroom because you can see it better. And I'm like, Chad, Chad, there's a fire. There's a fire and I can see it. And then I, I'm like texting was my... It midnight? It's midnight. It was yeah, midnight. She, she woke me up. I was scared. I mean, like how often do you look out your window and you see fi a fire coming over a roof from another block away? I mean, and then I'm like... What the hell's happening? Do we have to evacuate? Is the entire block on fire? Oh my God! No. Grab Aura and the kids. Let's go. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so then I I text my mom group because I have a mom group 
text that I'm always mm-hmm. behind in, but I text them and I'm like, oh my God, fire. And they're like, oh, let's check community, which, uh, or citizen, let's check citizen, which is this app that I just call the fear app because it just always tells you all the horrible things that are happening close to you. Close, very close <laughs> to you that you you would have no never idea. Known. Never known. Yep. So I'd never put it on my phone, but then I was like, oh, okay, fine. I'll download the app. And I download the app just to know how contained the fire is. Luckily, nobody got hurt, but it, it had completely engulfed the entire second floor of the apartment, um, of this small apartment building. It's like a two-story uh, building. Um, uh, I think there were two people with minor injuries is what the app ended up saying. But now I have it on my phone and I have to delete it because yeah, even now bad. I'm like looking and it's like, bling, like, and it's like saying something horrible is happening not too far away. I need uh. to live in ignorance of all of the horrible things of humanity so that I can sleep all at night. And I don't know how people can survive with that app on their phone and it going, bling, horrible thing, two blocks away, bling, another horrible right, thing. Right, right, because some people are like, ooh, okay, and then take their phones and go out to go look. At the horrible thing. Yeah, like people would go to the fires or car crashes well, and, and like just start filming or, you know, just like contributing because you're contributing to everyone else by like filming it and sharing it on the app. Well, that's exactly what happened with the fire because yeah. the fire was so big. But but the thing that was crazy about it is that in all the video footage that I saw of the fire, which was really bad, like the flames were coming oh, yeah. right out of the window. Mm-hmm. It, when he turned the camera to look on the street, there are all these people out on the street from their apartments. None of them are wearing masks. None of them. <laughs> so that was crazy too. But you know what? It's the middle of the night and you forget. You forget in a moment like that. Like, uh, I'm running outside. You forget, oh my God, we're in the middle of a pandemic. That's right. I'm supposed to wear a mask. You just think, oh my God, there's a fire. We got to get out of here. You know, what's happening? So I, you know, no big deal. That was I, crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, but I think everybody's okay. I think so. I, I think the one the one positive about that app is because I had it downloaded for a time uh, until there was an incident. But it by like looking around at what everyone was like documenting about like crimes and reasons people called the police and accidents and incidents, it gave me a better understanding of what the police have to deal with on like a yes. daily basis. Yes. Uh, besides just like all all like the crap that 911 operators have to get called like some people are like i can't open my jar of mayonnaise stop no it's really like 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 uh, go on the internet look up you know things people call about you know like 911 oh operators it's it's like you call them by like the most inane stuff but no it's like it's like wow police officers ha- and fire like first responders you know EMT fire like they have to respond to all this stuff and like what's happening in our neighborhood you know like oh it's late night so there's going to be some bar fights right or there's going to be like some domestic stuff or you know it's like you know things like of that nature but then then one day oh don't worry i'm wrapping it up you don't have to (laughs) signal me yeah we're at like what we're at 117 so no one day there was a car accident right outside our house and i was not at our house and and it was like ambiguous but somebody got hit by a car and i called you and you didn't pick up and it was like oh my god it's probably not us but you were with the kids and we had a couple incidents where you almost and i almost got creamed when we were with the kids it's it it, so it was very easy to almost get hit by a car here because there's a lot of pedestrians and there's a lot of cars and there's a lot of streets that you're crossing all the time so well not anymore but you know no still actually now i'm even more careful because there's Mm. so many more pedestrians out on the street and so many more bikers i was going like 20 miles per hour today i had to take the car out it's like my once a week outing in the car yeah and uh it's it's uh and people aren't paying attention right now on the roads it's crazy so you have people who are overprotective like me and then you have the people who are crazy because of the because of i don't know they're just feeling a lot of big feelings and they're just like going crazy in their cars so Mm. like no rules yes yes and there's like bikers so i'm going really slow and then there's a huge truck behind me going vroom vroom (laughs) and like (laughs) flashing their lights like i can go 15 miles an hour no problem Mm -hmm. so I'll go slower. Is that what you need? Was that what your message was? Dang. Mm. I wasn't being mean, but also, like, he was not being understanding. Like, there was, like, some bike, you know, people on their bicycles, and I'm, and it's, they're tight roads. Anyway, it's late, and we should say our good night. We're going to wrap it up. 
Well, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Um, we'll be back next week, Sunday, mm -hmm. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you like all the content that we're creating, please go to wondersparkpuppets.com. And by the way, if you know anybody special in your life who's celebrating a birthday, it can be any age. We do special birthday parties. We can do a birthday party for somebody who's younger, somebody who's older, and we can do a customized workshop to go along with that. And it can all be with people invited from all over the country or all over the world. So you let us know and we will create a very special memory for you. That's right. We do shows and workshops. Shows, workshops, <laughs> puppet telegrams, you name it. It's true. All Thanks right, so on that much. Note, thanks guys. See you later. Bye.